Hi and welcome to this tutorial. Today I'm going to teach you how to use the flash text type templates which are a group of templates that allow you to add interactivity to text that you create or import using a particular text type. Now as you can see there's a bunch of templates here and they all can be used to create something like this. Here's a little introduction to our activity here on persuasive writing and here is our persuasive writing article should children wear hats at school. Now the text structure is examined on this page firstly the statement of position here's the interactivity you mouse over that and you can easily show your kids where that is in the text okay mouse off it and it disappears and you can start talking about the arguments then and when you do you might like to mouse over arguments and highlight where they are in the text okay mouse off that and start talking about the reinforcement of position statement and highlight it when you do then we can go to the next slide on this slide we see the language features of the text so you can mouse over and see the general nouns the thinking verbs the action verbs the technical words, the modality, complex sentences, and so on. So to use this template, you'll need Flash CS5, which is on, if you're a New South Wales teacher, it's on the laptops. To actually play the template, you don't need Flash CS5. So any student with a modern computer, which has got Flash Player 10 on it, which most modern computers do, should be able to play it by simply opening up a HTML file and it'll look like they're on an internet page kind of like this does. So once you download one of the templates it'll look something like this. Alright as you can see we've got all those buttons here specially designed for that particular text type. Okay, If we look a bit closer we can see we've got a statement of position, arguments, reinforcement of position statement, all these buttons are actually already there made for you so all you've got to do is drag them into place now on top of the buttons you'll see there's a bunch of colored boxes these are actually a bunch of different colored boxes and each button controls the color on top of it so when basically all we're doing with this template is we're going to drag these buttons onto the stage and we're going to drag these boxes onto the stage on top of the text we type in and when you move over the button the code is already put in that will make these boxes visible when you mouse over the button attached to it. Let me tell you in a bit more detail what I'm talking about. First of all let's move to slide one as you can see we've opened it up we're on slide four this red rectangle here is called your scrub head just drag that until you on slide one and put in a heading and some text. I'll pause while I do that. Okay, I've done that and this is just an introduction so I'm not gonna have any buttons on this slide. I'm gonna drag my scrub head to slide two, okay? And I'm gonna actually put in the text about school hats. Now, the next thing you wanna do is actually drag your button onto the stage. To do that, you'll need to make sure you've clicked on your select tool or your selection tool and then you simply get the button you want and drag it onto the stage. So I'm going to get this, so I'm going to get this statement of position button and I'm going to drag it down onto the stage. Oops. Move it along a bit. And then you get one of the boxes above that button. I'm going to get one of these blue boxes which was on top of that button and drag it down onto the stage. Now this whole first paragraph is the statement of position so I want this blue box to cover all of that there's a couple ways you can do that first of all you can go up and change the width and the height here so let's do that and this is a bit of guesswork I know from practice that it's 700 wide or thereabouts and I forget how high it was I think about 120 so that's one way you can do that all right now We've got our statement of position and when the kids open that up it's going to make this blue box visible when they mouse over that. Let's look at the arguments now. Simply go up here and drag this button down onto your stage 
our arguments are underneath our statement of position so we'll grab a green box and drag it down there now again we could go up and change the width and the height but let's try another way of, of doing this if we right click on that green box we'll see this menu and click on the free transform button and we'll see that we can now use our mouse to manually make that wider okay and higher okay and drag it into place so let's try making it a bit wider and a bit higher and that covers our arguments lastly let's bring down this third box for our reinforcement of the position statement okay and one of these pink boxes on top of that okay I'll bring this pink box down here into the middle and make it a bit wider and a bit higher there we go so the text structure has all been finished now I'm not going to go through and show you the rest of the buttons because using them is exactly the same as using the first three. What I'll tell you is just a, a few little tricks that'll help you out when you're using this template. As you can see, if we move our scrub head along, we can have up to 20 different uh, frames here. Okay. Now, with my one, I might want to have only two. See, we're in frame slide two at the minute. If you only want content on two of those, you don't want your students to be able to click this button and then go to slide three where there is no content. So once you get to your last frame, simply move your mouse up to this forward button and drag it so it's somewhere above the stage here. Okay, so therefore the kids, if you move your scrub head back to frame one, the kids will be able to go forward from frame one to frame two then they'll be able to go back to frame one and or click the home button, which is the same thing. It takes them to frame one, but they won't be able to go forward to a slide with no content. Second thing, when you save this, you'll notice there's only one file in the folder. That's the FLA file, the file that you're using now to edit this in Flash. To make this available to your students who may or may not have Flash, you've actually got to publish the file. To do that, you go up to File, and then you go down to Publish, and it's as simple as that. Now, once you do that, in that same folder that you only had one file in before, you've now got four. You give this to your students, or if you're doing it as a class activity, this is the one you open, this HTML file. Okay, so you can just double click to open that. All right. When you do, you'll get some sort of warning, either down the bottom or up the top of your screen. It'll say something along the lines of whether you want to allow block content. Click yes, okay, because you've created this. There's no viruses. And here we have it. Our interactive file has been created. As simple as that. We can click to go to slide two. Mouse over. There's our statement of position. There are our arguments and our reinforcement down the bottom. However, you'll notice that I can't actually see the whole of this text here. Okay, now that's a little problem with Flash. It publishes, Flash CS5 publishes without the scroll bar here. Now, that problem's easily rectified. All you need to do is right click on this HTML file once it's been published and choose Open With and choose a text editor like Notepad. Most, most computers will have Notepad or some sort of text editor you can open that file with. Now there's a whole bunch of code here. You don't need to know anything about it. The only thing you need to know is that you delete this line that says overflow hidden. Just delete from overflow to hidden. Okay, once you've done that, close it, save it. And when you refresh that, all of a sudden you're going to see that scroll bar so we'll go down and we can see the bottom now and there it is okay finally I've created all these text type templates for ease of use so you don't have to worry about changing the names of these buttons or anything like that however as we know text types 
are very simplistic and you might want to create text which doesn't adhere to a specific text type and you might want to change the content of some of these buttons. If so, there's another video that best suits your needs and you can find that video here. Lastly, I'd just like to acknowledge that a lot of the content from for this and a lot of the buttons are created in accordance with this resource here. Okay, so I'll finish on that. That gave me a lot of the inspiration to create this resource and I hope you find, found it a valuable resource. I hope your students get a lot out of it too. Thank you very much.